So you might not know it, but I'm currently moving house at the moment out of that big building just over there. Uh, we've lived there for I think about 14 years now and yeah, it's going to be sad to move out of it, but we're quite excited to move away and to start a new chapter somewhere else with a garden as well. But in saying that, over the last 14 years, this has been my back garden. Now, it does have a long-standing history though as well. Now, I often go up to St Andrews and we call that visiting the home of golf because, well, that is exactly what it is. It's the home of golf. It's got the oldest golf course going in just over 500 years old. But this little bit of land here, this is probably a more important um, bit of mecca for golfers. Now, this goes back to 1744 with the formalization of the gentleman golfers and John Rattree being one of the first persons to win the first tournament. He signed, um, signed off on these rules and they effectively became the foundations for the modern rule of golf that we now know as of today. So as we walk along to the other end of the links, we come across a statue of John Rattree. Now, he was a surgeon to quite a notable figure, Prince Charles Edward Stuart. So he was the young pretender, the one that was trying to claim his rightful heir, his rightful throne to Scotland. And this guy, John Rattree, the great golfer, was his private surgeon. So, 1744, he won the prestigious Captain of the Golf, which was a great thing to hold because he was the first one to hold it. Now, that was a fairly short-lived experience because the late, next year, the later year, was a fairly short-lived experience because the next year came the Jacobite Uprising, and this was the Great Uprising against the British, with Bonnie Prince Charlie at the helm. Now, this was could have been potentially his downfall because he could have lost his life. He was able to survive all the way until the Battle of Culloden, which we as all know is the end of basically the Jacobite campaign. He was captured at the Battle of Culloden and then he was set to hang. Now being set to hang then he was going to be obviously executed, but he had friends in fairly powerful high places. Lord Duncan Forbes of Culloden was able to um, agree his release. Now, as a free man, he probably worked as a surgeon, I would think. I actually don't really know that much about him after that. Uh, but I know back in 1751, he did come back, he played a tournament, and he won his uh, title back again as captain of the golf. So yes, there you have it. St Andrews absolutely is the home of golf, but this little place, Leith Links, is the home of competitive golf. So if you're ever in Edinburgh and you can't make it to St Andrews for whatever reason, come down to Leith, just off of John's place where I used to live, and you can walk around the first proper golf course where competitive golf was played. As ever, my name is Chris from Monarch Tours. Give us a like, give us a subscribe as well, and also you can become a Patreon member too by clicking the link below. And be one of the first ones to support the channel and see it grow. Uh, any of the money that comes from that goes towards the production of any of the videos that I do, uh, and it helps me continue doing this great little thing. So, enjoy. Bye.